following is an extended product spotlight paid for by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Haney, host of Real Ag Radio, Rural Radio 147, Sirius XM, and founder of Real Agriculture. Thanks for listening and welcome to the next episode of the Canola Podcast, sponsored by Invigor Hybrid Canola from BSF. The Canola Podcast is a series where we discuss useful tips and tools that growers can take to the field to help grow a more successful crop. Hey, don't forget to also visit canolaschool.com to see agronomic videos from Real Agriculture and BSF, your real one-stop shop for agronomic videos on demand to help you out. Okay, today we're talking about using seed treatments on Invigor hybrids on your farm. And we'll take you through why we use seed treatments on canola. Very, very important, something we kind of take for granted, but it's an integral, important step of protecting that crop. So let's bring in our guest. I'm joined today by Nikki Verkine. She's brand manager for seed treatments at BSF. And Anique Gisettis, technical marketing for seed treatments and inoculants for BSF. Uh, Nick and Nikki, welcome. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having us. Okay, let, let's get to it here. Um, I, I know this comes up uh, a lot on social media, like platforms like Twitter. People are, are asking for bare or untreated canola seed, um, cost saving probably being one of the, the avenues there they're trying to do that. Can, can you talk about what seed treatments actually bring to the table and why seed is not sold untreated? So it's really important for us at BSF that growers really get the most out of their Invigor hybrid canola. And as you mentioned, Sean, seed treatments are integral part of, of growing canola. They bring a lot to the table when we're thinking about early stages of the crop's development. Because canola is susceptible to a wide range of pathogens, insects, and, and pests overall, Protection from the fungicides and insecticide components are, are really the main key benefits we talk about when we're referring to seed treatments on canola. But why this is important for growers is because by protecting against key seed and soil borne pathogens, as well as insects, seed treatments support uniform emergence and ultimately help achieve target plant population um, and ultimately the seed treatments um, from that BSF is offering on Invigor hybrid canola in 2023 really provide answers for all of growers concerns and also allow them to have more options to, um, to help protect against the pests that they're concerned about on their farm. Can you, can you comment on the the effects that environmental conditions that they can have on germinating seedlings early on and, and how that relates to seed treatments, trying to protect those seedlings? So as we all know, here in Western Canada, environmental conditions change year to year. Growers really never know what they're going to get when, when they start seeding. In a lot of cases, Growers are faced with stressful conditions during during seeding time, and and these conditions can really put a strain on on canola during the the critical stages of of the seed seedling's life. Yeah, and diseases they they happen as a complex, right? It's really hard to target specific symptoms to a specific disease. If we think about the primary soil-borne pathogens that are present in Western Canada, you know, Rhizoctonium, Pythium, Fusarium, whatever it may be, the symptoms are relatively similar, whether it's seed decay, um, root rot, seed, seedling blight, pre and post-emergence dampening off, all those symptoms are relatively similar. Uh, when we think about canola rotation starting to tighten up and the fact that most of these diseases have multiple host crops, we don't see an opportunity for that inoculum to really break down right before we get into the next canola uh, portion of that rotation. Pythium can happen in cold, damp soils. Rhizoctonia, we more so see in those dry, well-worked situations. Fusarium, more so that heavy, wet type of soil there. And really, what we need to focus on is that there needs to be multiple AIs that are targeting um, 
those diseases because they can occur in a variety of different environments and the symptoms are really, really hard to, to understand there. Okay, that, that, that all makes sense. Now, for a lot of growers, they'll remember not too long in the distant past, past that, you know, there was one seed treatment. Like, you know, your, your canola came with just, you had, there was really no options, just what it came with. Now there's tons of considerations. Nick, what should growers look for in making the proper, correct seed treatment decision based on the variety that they're going to put in the ground? Absolutely. So I think a grower needs to take it down to their own localized level or their own fields uh, when they think about what they're dealing with on that field level before they make that decision. So when we think about in bigger canola um, and the seed treatments that we're offering in the 2023 portfolio, uh, we have the Helix Vibrance as our base seed treatment, Lumiderm for cutworm um, concerns, and then Buteo uh, for our flea beetle uh, concerned growers. So when we think about Helix Vibrance, uh, it's a great base seed treatment for Invigor. You have those four fungicide AIs targeting those seed and soil borne diseases. You have that Neonic for a base insecticide. And we would recommend that growers that um, aren't concerned with cutworms or flea beetles on any level, just go with the, the base there. Most growers though, uh, do have concerns when we think about those insect, um, insects and the pressures that they're bringing to, to fields in, in previous years. Uh, Lumiderm is a great option for enhanced um, cutworm control, excellent control of those early season cutworms, um, and a little bit of enhanced crucifer and striped flea beetle control. But when I think about flea beetle pressure, we are really excited to be offering Buteo in 2023 for Invigor Grower Canolas, and that would be my recommendation there. If they have any concerns um, in terms of flea beetle pressure, topping up there with that Buteo on top of the Helix Vibrance. Yeah, any tools to increase the leverage in the battle against flea beetles is very welcome by growers across Western Canada based on their experiences the past number of years. So, okay, so on that Buteo note, now that you've added Buteo, Will, will that negate the need for a foliar insecticide application? Or are we going to limit some of the applications? What's, what's your thoughts there? Really good questions, Sean. So um, from that side of things, flea beetles, like any X, uh, insect or any disease, we want to approach it from an integrated pest management approach, right? Um, no seed treatment is going to be a silver bullet. It's a really, really great option, but when flea beetle pressure is really great, uh, there still may need to be um, the option of applying a foliar insecticide there. So we don't recommend, you know, treating your seed, throwing it in the ground and walking away. We still recommend scouting even those buteo treated acres and making sure you understand the level of pressure that's in your field so you can make um, your secondary decisions accordingly. Speaking of foliar insecticides. Now, in the past, BSF has had programs to help with the cost of applications, you know, sort of subsidizing it. Is there anything that can be included in the 2023 for for growers? Yeah, for 2023, BSF will have a similar program um, to support growers on flea beetle and cutworm pressure. So it will be called the Invigor Commitment Program. I can give a run through of, of what this is going to look like for 2023. So for growers that choose Buteo Start um, as a top-up seed treatment option, and they if they do as observe 25% um, or more flea beetle damage on their Invigor hybrid canola, they may be eligible for $6 per acre to support the cost of one application of a foliar insecticide, so products including desis or pounce. And again, this is for their Invigor hybrid canola treated with Buteo Start. For growers that choose Lumiderm as their top-up seed treatment option, and that if they observe similar fleetal feeding damage, they will be eligible for, again, $6 per acre support on one application of pounds um, to support um, their Invigor hybrid canola treated with Lumiderm. 
if growers observe cutworm damage on lumiderm treated Invigor hybrid canola, they may qualify for $8 per acre to support one application of pounds. As Nick mentioned, one of our offerings as well is Helix Vibrance alone. So no top-up insecticide um, added for, for that Invigor hybrid canola. In this case, growers will not be eligible for flea beetle or cutworm support. So when they're thinking about um, their seed treatment top-up options and the support we're providing with the Invigor um, commitment program, keep that in mind um, when thinking about flea beetle and cutworm pressure um, in their canola. Well, that's it for today's program. A big thanks to Nikki and Anique for joining us today to discuss seed treatments and, and what they can do for your canola crop. Thanks for listening, and, and don't forget to visit canolaschool.com to check out videos from Real Agriculture and BSF for all you need to know about growing canola and uh, hitting those top-end yields that you are looking for. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers, everybody.